Can you tell the difference between a dipole and a J-pole? We'll explain some antenna basics coming up. KN4 NEH, this is an NGM. Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep. We deal with antennas every day in Ham Radio, but sometimes it's a little overwhelming. So we're going to take you through the most basic antenna types. One of the first antennas you may encounter in your ham radio experience is this one. At its most basic, you would call it a vertical antenna. It's affectionately called a rubber ducky. It's typically just what comes with the radio. The manufacturer's antenna is usually a compromise. They've designed it so it trades the convenience of size for radiating performance. The typical rubber ducky is only about seven inches high. That's one tenth of a wavelength on the two meters band. So coils and windings are used to electrically lengthen it. If you want to change that for something different, there are options. Third party antennas come in longer and shorter sizes. If you want to get more performance at a distance, pop a longer antenna on your handheld. If you're mostly using it around the house or a park, make it easier to carry with a smaller antenna. A J-pole is a multi-band, multi-element antenna that's shaped like the letter J. It's usually used for VHF and UHF communications, and it can also be connected to be an enhancement to your handheld antenna. A rolled up J-pole is a great antenna for emergency go kits when you need maximum effectiveness. It's usually made from antenna ladder line and can be stashed in a go bag. If you're looking for something more permanent like for your house, you'll find instructions online on how to homebrew a J-pole out of copper pipe. So if you take a look here, you'll see that the ladder line breaks and it makes this J shape and that's why they call it a J-pole. This J-pole is nice long antenna, so you got a lot of wire in the air to operate on two meter and 440. The ground plane antenna is another option to build or buy. This can be a smaller antenna for VHF and UHF operating. It can also be a 33 foot tall model to get in on some HF bands. Commercially, you'll see these as half-wave or 5 8 wave vertical antennas with smaller ground radiating elements. If you choose to build one for VHF or UHF, many go the route of picking up an SO239 connector and some stiff wire or an old coat hanger. If you're trying to make simplex contacts or get into a repeater on 2 meter or 70 centimeters, a vertical antenna is your choice for cities or flat areas. You don't give up signal strength in most directions, and most repeater antennas are also vertically oriented. Let's think about a vertical antenna mounted on your vehicle. From the looks of it, it's a vertical without the ground plane, right? Well, not exactly, because in this case, your car or truck acts like the ground plane. Verticals on cars tend to be a quarter or half wavelength for two meters. With a larger antenna, once again, you'll trade size for gain, which means the antenna gets directivity. In this case, the directivity would be away from the car. The term dipole might sound intimidating, but it really just translates to two elements, dipole or two poles. Did you ever buy a stereo receiver and get a T-shaped piece of wire to improve your reception? That's sort of a dipole antenna. You'll see dipole antennas both above and below 30 megahertz, but they're much more popular on the high frequency or HF bands because they're easy to put together with a ballon. A ballon is the device that connects the antenna to the feed line and the elements usually some spare wire like speaker wire or ethernet cable. A half wave like dipole is the typical one you'll see. Here's an example. If you're making an antenna for the 10 meter band, using a frequency of 28.5 megahertz, 
your half wavelength antenna will be a total of five meters across, or half the wavelength. In American units, that's 16 and a half feet. Take your five meters and divide it in two again to get the length of the two dipole elements. In our example, that's 2.5 meters long, or about eight and a quarter feet on each side. Put an insulator on one end and a ballot in the middle, hang it from your deck or in a tree, and you're on the air. The math works on other HF bands too. For instance, the lower the band, the longer the antenna. So an antenna on the 40 meter band would be 20 meters across, or about 65 feet. Here's the formula you need to convert frequency to antenna length in feet. Don't worry about remembering it, because there's plenty of dipole length calculators online. The nice thing about a horizontal dipole is it's a standard reference for an antenna without gain. This means it's a basic antenna that can be used for transmitting or receiving. This is a really easy build as well. And you can customize the length to fit your yard or the available space you have to work in. So far, the antennas I've mentioned here have been mostly omnidirectional. They generally work well in all directions. So what about directional antennas? A directional antenna pulls signals that would have gone in all directions and focuses them in a narrower beam. This is called a Yagi antenna, and it starts with a dipole. We'll call that the driven element. The driven element gets surrounded with more dipoles. One's called a reflector, and the others are called directors. It works like this. Instead of sending a strong signal in all directions, a reflector, just a little longer than our driven element, takes the signal coming its way and bounces it back towards the driven element. This amplifies the signal, or adds gain in a direction. The directors, which are smaller than the driven element, help point the signal in the right direction. The more directors there are, the more directionality the antenna will have. Some directional 2-meter antennas have up to 28 elements. Many hams have success with 2-meter Yagis they make from old tape measures and PVC pipe. It's a quick and easy project. If you're far away from a repeater or looking to do things like communicating with satellites or the ISS, it's time to evaluate different directional or Yagi style antennas. Yagi antennas are popular on HF to help bring in the DX signals from around the world. It's a very versatile design that you probably see more than you think. The biggest trade-off with a Yagi, if it's not pointing at a signal, it's much harder to hear it and talk to that station. Antennas are a great thing to experiment with. Hanson designed everything from flagpole verticals to hide from their homeowners association, to loops, traps, cages, and other unique designs. In our video on the top five HF antennas for new hams, we talk about the strange antenna challenge. This is where hams use things like bed springs or street signs as makeshift antennas. You can check that video out for more information. There's a key point here though about strange antennas. That is, some antennas are better than no antennas. If you've got the tools to build or buy one, great. If you have 70 feet of spare ethernet cable after a rewire job, you can probably use that to get on 40 meters. So be adventurous and experiment. If you have thoughts or questions about antennas, check out our other videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If this inspires you to get on the air and start building your own antennas, visit us at hamradioprep.com for licensed courses that tens of thousands of people have used to get their call sign and get upgraded. I'm Jim N4BFR, and we hope that you get that antenna set up so we can hear you on the air soon.